So I want to show you how to fill a character array with text data. You already know, whoop, that's not what I wanted. You already know how to do it using CN, which I've showed you here, but you can also do it by reading from a file. I'm going to clear all this code and show you how to load data from a file and then load all of that data into a character array. The first thing that we need is the library that'll, that will allow us to open up a file and to pull data out of it. That library is fstream. fstream uses the standard namespace just like iostream, so it's important that you have using namespace for it. Once you have the library included, you can make use of the fstream object, and I'll make an fstream object called file. And this is actually an object that you have to construct. Part of the file construction uses a special function called a constructor. One easy constructor to use using fstream is just to type in the file name into the object like this. Now, file will try to open main.cpp, which is the file that this program is actually compiled from. Once it's loaded, I can print out all of the data from this file. And I'm going to do that like this, while file dot good cout file dot get. And let's run that and see what happens. One thing I forgot to do. This right here opens a file. Once you're done using your file, it's good practice to close the file. Opening a file would lock it and prevent all other programs from accessing it, and the only way to unlock it again would be to close it. It's good practice that I close the file that I opened. So let's run this. And wow, look at that. That's not what I expected. Actually, it's exactly what I expected. All of these digits here happen to belong to the ASCII codes of the letters inside of main.cpp. 35 is the pound sign. 105 is a lowercase i. 110 is a lowercase n. 99 is the lowercase c. And I can make this a little bit clearer by typecasting it. Let's run this now. Bingo. At the end of the program, notice that there's a little space here but there isn't a space here. There's a little distance between the end of this curly bracket and when the cursor is. That right there is the negative one character, or the end of file, and that's how we know that we've reached the end of a file. In a similar way to the way that we count the size of a C string by looking for the null terminator, we can count the size of a file by looking for the end of file character, like this. File size equals zero, file size plus plus, actually that's if file char found character equals found character if found character does not equal negative one. Negative one is the end of file then it will increase the file size and then I will see out this file is file size bytes Let's run it and see what happens this file is 375 bytes now that I know how big the file is I can make an array big enough to store the whole thing char star entire file equals new char file size and then I'm going to reopen the file like this I'll start file size off actually now that's a bad idea, I'll make an index equals zero and entire file index equals file.get while index is less than file size. Then at the end, I'll simply print out entire file and see what that looks like. Let's run that. 
looks good to me. Oh wait, no. Why it, it didn't print out? Why didn't it print out? Hmm. What's going on? How come my computer's frozen? Oh, because I'm not incrementing index. That's not good. So I need to forcibly close that program, I think. Do I? Nope. Oh, I already closed it. Okay, good. So I need to increment index because if I don't, then this while loop won't advance. Let's run that. Sorry. There we go. So here it prints out the first time we figure out how big the file is. It increased in size because of that extra code that we added. And then, what the heck is all that stuff? Interesting. I wonder what all this stuff is for. Oh, I know, actually I know exactly what that's for. It's because it's printing out extra stuff beyond the entire file array. This is exactly how many bytes that the file had, and when I print out entire file, it prints out all of the data in that array, but there's no null terminator telling it to stop printing. So what I need to do here is I need to increase the size of entire file by one element, and at the end of the entire file, file size, I need to add the null terminator. And now it won't print out that extra stuff. At the end of my program, I should probably delete the entire file as well. Let's run that again. There we go. So here it prints out the first time. Then it tells us how many bytes are in the file. And then it prints out the second time. The first time it prints out, it's printing out because of this print statement inside of the while loop, the one that's initially running it to determine the, the file size. And here it prints out with this cout. There are actually a number of ways to find a file size. This way right here is kind of a bad way. It's, it's one of the worst ways actually to find file size, but it's a way that will always work. I've actually done some programming for other platforms I've discovered that certain operating systems and certain firmware will not report the size of a file correctly. So if you want to get the absolute exact number of bytes that are in a file, the only way you can be guaranteed to get it is to go through the entire file and count how many bytes there are. This method works pretty well for small files like main.cpp here.